Middle-earth Shadow of War A sequel to long-anticipated release of Shadow of Mordor. It's funny that this game received outstanding reviews even before its initial release. And I'm sure that fans were waiting this since 2014. So is this game any good? Does this game deliver what the fans needed? Well, if you're going to the game store and you try to pick something up for the what night, you will most likely get your fingers burned, especially if you haven't done your homework. It's like going to the club and trying to pick up a date uh, with a blindfold on. Or it's like, uh, Forrest Gump said, a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. You will most likely get a piece of shit. But trust me on this, with Shadow of War you can't go wrong. It will give you at least 100 hours of fun gameplay. Nothing in this game feels recycled. With its unique nemesis system, you feel like you have a new sort of battle, new sort of enemy and your goals every time it's different. With hundreds of different orcs, with different personalities, different skill sets and even different classes will give you joy each time you kill them. And yes, whatever it lacks in story, it compensates in immersive gameplay and even the deficiency of excitement bubbling lore, the game manages to pull itself together in the end by delivering you an awesome and surprising ending. So what about the gameplay itself? You have five different regions of open world that you can explore. In the beginning your main character Talion has to do a lot of running. But thanks to heaven even this is fun. To the infusion with the spirit you are granted many superpowers including Usain Bolt like running speed. And what I like the most you can fall off at any height without taking damage. All five regions are full of missions and exciting conflicts with orcs and many other enemies. Side and main missions are spiced with the excitement of recruiting captains and overlords to your army. You will serve the bright lord! I'll cut your enemies! With your new recruits, you can overtake regions by completing siege missions. And of course what I always enjoy the most, collectibles. You have to collect different shit to open it hidden doors. You need to find old shell of memories. And of course you need to collect all Gondorian artifacts. This game also had a special Mithril edition. This will set you back $300. It includes Shadow of War Gold edition with exclusive steel case. It has premium case with magnetic ring of power. An exclusive Mithril war chest which I suppose is digital. Of course cloth map of Mordor. Collection of exclusive lithographs. Tribe sticker pack. Collector's box and of course this huge 12 inch statue which I measured I don't have any place to put it and, and to be honest I don't even care if there's a 12 inch cock in this collector's edition I am not willing to spend $300 on a game Maximum amount I'm willing to pay is approximately $160 on Assassin's Creed Dawn of the Greed edition It's twice as cheap Anyway, back to the review. Game graphics is a bit better than average. I mean, it's slightly better than Shadow of Mordor was. But it still fails to deliver to the gamers with modern day's expectations of quality. Many find the textures muddy and sometimes they are. I mean, Metal Gear Phantom Pain was released in 2015. It was much bigger and delivered graphics beyond comparison to Shadow of War. So what I'm saying is stop being lazy and do it, uh, do it the right way the first time. Pit fights, riding dragons, collecting your army. Everything sounds fun, but 
there is a downside to this game as well. Well, remember me telling you about the ending? Without spoiling much, you really need to work to get to it. After a certain point, game leaves you on your own and you have to do a lot of side missions before you can get to the ending. And those side missions mean that you have to grind hours upon hours. Basically, that means you have to do at least 20 siege missions. And trust me, they're not as easy as they were before. When you lose the mission, you will lose the region and you have to start all over again with the siege mission. One battle can last you about 20 minutes and you might have to do couple of those in one siege. Each time you have to kill at least four different captains. In between them you have to revive your own army members and it's cruciatingly painful if you lose the battle to the overlord. In one of those failures I had about 40 minutes of gameplay behind me and the overlord killed me in one blow. I screamed in agony and thought about throwing my controller at the TV. Some other downsides are control related. Jumping up or down the hill can be a really difficult task sometimes. It's especially annoying if you're trying to escape but can't get up the hill. And it's also frustrating if you're trying to jump down some ledge and Talion just stands there like an autistic stalk. And finally, I'm going to touch the most sensitive subject in this game, microtransactions. It's been a lot of fuss over this for the past couple of months since the first previews came out and even Angry Joe was really worried about it, even angry about it. And my first reaction was, fuck, another game who wants your money after you've given them money. It painfully reminded me the For Honor game. But the day when I finally got the game and I saw the part in this market, there is no need to panic, keep calm. You don't need to buy any of this shit in there. And the ones you want are just buyable with your in-game currency. And with some missions you are rewarded with the gold coins that you can buy with the real money. So that means whatever good shit you want, you can buy with this as well. The most important thing you need to buy is the box that contains double XP. You need to have this activated at all times. If you do this, you will level up really 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 fast. Skill tree is massive, even beyond comprehension in the beginning. But still, I'm loving it. Weapons, armor, rings, big variety but it leaves you clueless at times. Especially when you find more powerful ordinary gear. Then it leaves your legendary gear for ass wiping. What is the point of doing strong shitty items and vice versa? All legendary items come with their own missions or so called side tasks to upgrade them further. You can also upgrade gems with lesser gems to make more powerful gems to craft even greater gems. A lot of gems. So in conclusion, what do you think about the game? Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time? And the answer is, yes it is! If you enjoyed the first game, Shadow of Mordor, you will definitely enjoy this one as well. It's more of everything you enjoyed in the previous game. And it deserves a place on your shelf for years to come. I will give this game a score of 7 out of 10. And the reason why is because the story itself fails to deliver. Oh, and there's one other thing. To get all the trophies, you will need to play online matches, online siege missions against other people. And since it's a requirement for platinum trophy, I feel forced to do this, especially because it's so slow progress. And because all of that, 7 is a perfect score. I'm Silly Lamas and I hope that you enjoyed this fast but somewhat shallow overview compared to the overwhelming enormity of the whole gameplay. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of the game if you're planning to buy it. Thanks for watching, till next time.